Hello, and welcome to Stage Screen and In Between. I'm Helen. I have a very special guest tonight. I have Dennis Cabrini, who is the lead actor, director, producer, and my boss, actually, in High Hopes 2. Dennis, thank you so much for coming today and talking about your terrific movie. It's my pleasure, Helen. Uh, the movie is High Hopes 2, A New Beginning, and the reason why it's High Hopes 2 is obviously there was a High Hopes 1. Uh, the first, we got a pretty good response with the first film. I decided to uh, shoot a second one. And uh, the long-term goal of this film is I'd like to do a, a series of uh, 12 episodes and see if we could get some distribution and get on TV. Well, uh, tell everybody about the premise of the movie because actually, did you write this? Yes, I'm the writer. So it's actually based on your life experience. So tell our audience something about that. Okay. It's not entirely based on my life experience, but what it is based on is the struggles that an actor goes through when they're not necessarily the stereotypical type of, uh, you know, Brad Pitt looking, uh, high end type of person. This is more about a uh, blue collar group of people. This is about ordinary people. I've always felt that in film, they never uh, show enough things about people that are the common everyday man. There are too many films. Everybody's always got a high end job. They make a lot of the money. This movie's about, uh, film is about people that uh, are ordinary people but still have dreams and still have hopes. Hence the name High Hopes. And uh, it's about people that, uh, it's about a guy who's a taxi cab driver. And the reason he drives a cab is because he has this dream about being an actor. And it's never worked out for him. And now he's over 50 years old. He still hasn't made it, but he won't give up on his dream. He won't give up on his high hopes. Yeah, that's so cool. Now, um, let me ask you: How long did it take you to write this? Uh, it took me the the second time. I already had all the co um, characters developed and everything to a large degree. So it took me uh, maybe about two weeks. The first film took me about a month. I, uh, you know, once I have an idea in my head, I, I can write the story pretty pretty quickly. Let's take a look now, and you'll see what Dennis is talking about. Oh, wow. Isn't that Ron Jeremy? You know, that ugly porn star? No. That's Danny DeVito. My name is Danny Valentino, and ever since I can remember, I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> All my friends, they thought I was crazy. I don't look like an actor. You're just wasting your time going on to this audition. Look at that hack license. Look at that picture. Man, you're some ugly dude, I'll tell you. And after 25 years of trying to make it in show business, I have to question whether I even have the talent. Now I see why your acting career never took off. What a horrible performance. The last time I ever saw anybody perform that badly was, uh, let me see, you on your honeymoon. Pursuing this career has caused me nothing but trouble. I think your acting has gone to your brain. With my landlord. Why would I want to make a bet with you? I'll tell you why, because I just came from the police station and turned myself in. Oh, right, you got a deal, moron. With my wife, because I'm never home. And when I am, I'm drooling over my neighbors, the Titanellis. It seems like trouble just has a way of finding me. To make ends meet, I drive a taxi cab. Recently, my boss knocked me out. <laughs> and then she fired me. So in order to get my job back, I offer her a proposition. I challenge you to a three-round boxing match. I accept your challenge, Big Mac. So now, I gotta fight a woman to get my job back. I must be crazy. And that's not the only fight I have on my hands. The police are after me. The only constants in my life are that everybody, everybody, thinks I'm a loser. You're a loser. L-O-S-E-R. -S 
Maybe I should just give up. What's wrong with me? Why does a guy with no looks, no talent, and no luck think he can make it as an actor? All I know is I'm not going to give up. I may be a loser, but I've never been a quitter. I'm not going to let go of my dream. I'm not going to let go of my high hopes. That is so funny. I just love it. And I guess if you guys noticed, I'm in it. And I'm actually his boss, which is pretty cool for me. And thank you, by the way, for that role, because I love playing that character, because I get to be mean and bossy. And that's really the hidden side of me, mean and bossy. And there really is nobody, nobody that could have played that part better than Helen. Oh, this part you. was, this part was made for her. And uh, when I wrote it, she was the only person I had in mind to play the, the role. I think she knocked it out of the ballpark. Thank you so much, Dennis. But you have other very talented people in the cast. You want to name a couple? We're gonna have them come on and talk, and the audience will see who they are. Okay, uh, I had Judy Prianti, who plays my sister. Um, there was Cheryl Metric, who uh, played my evil landlord's uh, wife. And, of course, the evil landlord was Bob DeBato. Um, there were uh, Matt Jade, who played one of the stoners, and Dale Killian, who was another stoner. Dale also served as uh, help in the background uh, with production, with making sure everything ran smoothly. He did a good job. Uh, I also wanted to bring in on this segment uh, my cameraman, uh, Andrew, and his partner, John Bewley. Without them, the film wouldn't exist. And uh, I think he did a great job as an uh, assistant director. So I also directed the film, but uh, one thing that's difficult is when you're directing and you're also on the other end of the camera. It's very difficult to capture everything. And uh, we weren't working with a high budget, so time was of the essence. And uh, I think we pulled it off. And I think we made a very good film. And um, there was Rosemary Cook, who uh, was invaluable in helping me behind the scenes, uh, preparing everything. And she helped uh, address me for the... Um, there's a scene where I'm on an audition and I'm supposed to be much younger. And the joke is, as you look at me, and I'm not younger, at all I still got the same old face but I have longer hair and longer sideburns and uh, she did all the makeup for me to get me ready for that role and did a good job and we want to do a, a special shout out and thoughtfulness for Eric Williams who recently passed and he is in the scene with us in in a real taxi garage which is where we shot it and what was his character's name all right, Eric's character's name was Eric, and Eric, to give you a little background, was my best friend growing up as a, a, a kid, and uh, we had a somewhat interesting story. I moved away from New York City in my last year of high school, and Eric had uh, moved from family to family, and along the way we lost touch, and he still always remained in my heart, my best friend, and I continued to search for him, and we kept missing each other, and anyway, 30 years later, I was able to find him. He was a broadcaster uh, at WBAI radio and uh, I found him and we were together for the last 11 years of his life. His loss uh, is, I, I can't even, I can't even get over it. I, I think about him every day. He's only been gone a few days and uh, I miss him. And Eric, man, you know how much I loved you and I, I know it was mutual and uh, I'll never forget you and I'm glad I got you to be part of my film. God bless you. At least he'll, he'll live on in this movie, won't he? Yes, he will. So, Dennis, thank you for talking to me, and we're going to have some of the other talent come out and talk as well. Okay, great. Now that you've seen the trailer, I'd like to introduce you to the rest of my talented cast. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you forgot me. I'm the psychotic rich guy in the back you are, of your Joe. cab. I'm very sorry. This is Joe Crescetti. He played uh, the rich cab passenger that uh, was one of my, my best paying customers. And uh, I forgot to mention him, and I really do apologize to you, Joe. He also was one of my producers. Well, I really apologize. Well, don't ever do that again. You almost gave me a heart attack. I won't, please. All right. I still need you to All right. be involved in All my right. project. I'll talk to you. Okay. I Take care, go. Joe. Okay. Joe Crescetti, everybody. Hey, Dennis. Oh, no. 
Uh oh. What the hell is going on around here? You always sticking it to me. You always doing it. You're doing it again. Hank the hobo. Forget about Hank the hobo. He lives in the park. Forget about him. You know? Well, what the hell, man? Stand. I trust you. I thought you were gonna be. Gonna I got your autograph in my pile of junk. You know? I was gonna film my you. Separately. Prize position. I was gonna film you separately. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. Out of the yeah, I come can. out of the garbage can. That's what I am to you. Something that comes out of a garbage can. What do you call that again? Oh, yeah. Okay. Garbage. Everybody, I That's apologize. what comes out of this. Come and see me. Hank. Everybody. This is Hank Lampert who played Hank the Hobo. Um, he did a really good job. He has his own little trailer on Everybody the internet. Everybody loves me. Okay. And I'm really glad that you were part of the film. I'm sorry I forgot about you. Hank the Hobo, everybody. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hi, Dale Killian. Uh, part of the cast of High Hopes. Um... Well, my character is uh, Mikey Mantle, and I get to play along with this guy here, my, my buddy Matt Jade. He's kind of like a younger brother to me, a great guy to work with. And uh, I had a blast doing it. Uh, I also did a little sound with the movie, too, and uh, had, had a really good time working with the, uh, the filmmaker. Um, but my characters, uh, I tried to base it off of a, uh, a takeoff on Jim from Taxi, Christopher Lloyd, and uh, a, a couple other characters. But um, the, the take... We didn't have as much time as we thought, and uh, once again, I, I found that uh, Andrew Swords did a phenomenal job of making it look like a great scene. Um, uh, and the, uh, the impromptu stuff I saw from, from Dennis in the, uh, in the scene was great, too. Um, I, d I don't have a lot of other things I can cover. Uh, I was too busy running sound at the time to pay attention to much anything else, and I hope I did a great job in bringing something really good to the film. So uh, I'll pass the mic over to to Matt Jade here and let, it, let him take it from there. How you doing? Uh, my name is Matt Jade and I had the lucky role of playing a great character named Matt Spade alongside here with my buddy Dale Killian who was Mikey Mantle. Yeah, he was pretty good. And we had a good time, you know, we were actually shooting under some precarious conditions. The uh, sun was setting, but it made it look really real and kind of like the, the the amount of time we had to do it made it feel like a real sense of pressure. So I feel like the scene came out really well. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I might have looked like a stoner, but uh, I got to tell you, we were quite sober during the scene, right? And uh, it was a lot of fun, and I worked with some great actors and some really great directors and crew, cast cinematographers and producers and uh, I, I really got to say it was a real blast shooting this film Hi I'm Bob DeBato and my character in this film is Richard and of course Danny likes to refer to me by the name Dick throughout the whole episode <laughs> and it goes back to a love-hate relationship we've had since we've known each other almost 30 years so we're not really acting when we put each other down. We truly do hate one another. And I hate him even more because he's actually married to my sister, Judy, here. And he's got this dream of someday becoming a great actor, which is never going to happen. We all know it. And he's totally destroyed his whole family over this dream that he has. It's a freaking nightmare. Look at him. He ain't going anywhere. All right? You dick. Well... I don't know how I can top that, but anyway, I'm Judy Prienti, and I had the honor of play playing Dennis's sister. And that scene was the longest day of my life. I didn't think it would, it would ever end, but anyway, it was, it was great working with everybody here, I have to say. Very experienced cast. And now I'll turn the mic over to... Hi, I'm Rosemary Cook. I get um, My role is... Um, Mia Titinelli, who is a neighbor of Danny Valentino's in the tenement apartment house. Uh, actually, my, the young lady, Ms. D'Agostino, who plays my daughter, is not here today, unfortunately, but she really was the catalyst. She's an excellent actress, is very flirtatious with the camera, she's, and she was flirtatious in the film as well. And um, both of us have the last name Titinelli, obviously, and um, that just uh, pinpoints the the real role we play there is uh, a distraction uh, that brings out Danny's um, impulsivity, I guess, and um, causes him a lot of grief. Anyway, I don't have my props here today to show you, but um, you'll, I'm sure you'll notice. And it was a really great film. Uh, we had a great time, and everyone involved did an outstanding job, and it was a pleasure working with everyone. I hope to do it again. I'm going to pass this over now to our cameraman. 
Hi, I'm John Buley. I was second camera for the film, and uh, mainly my job was to do whatever this guy told me, which constantly was, hey, can you string a bunch of lights from the ceiling? Of course, that ceiling's like 30 feet in the air. Yeah. With your feet. Yeah, with, with your feet. We're not, we're not a hand shoot. So um, uh, my name is Andrew Schwartz, and for High Hopes 2, I was the cinematographer, um, uh, editor, sound designer, uh, post-production supermaster. And, um, and I um, first have to thank John Buley over here for being an incredible um, assistant and also helping me light the film. Um, uh, this was an amazing experience, and just getting to know all these people so incredibly well, like family. Um, of course, Dennis Cabrini, the t hilarious, talented Dennis Cabrini, and um, everyone else was just such a blast to work with, and um, everyone was such an incredibly hard worker, uh, and so much stamina, and so much energy, and uh, there's little I can think of that would be more impressive in people to work with than that. Uh, so, if you do get a chance to see the film, I hope you enjoy it. Hey, Helen, do you mind if I sleep in your garbage can? I haven't stayed in a nice place in a long time. Sure. Not the new one. <laughs> I would like to once again uh, thank two people that aren't here, Cheryl Metric and Oriana D'Agostino. Thank you very much for your participation in the film. And again, a shout out to my uh, good friend, Eric K. Williams, who passed away this week, and uh, I think everybody shares my sentiments in uh, uh, the sorrow and, and uh, the fact that we miss Eric very much. Uh, I thank him so much for being in this film, and uh, God bless you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. God We're going to miss you. Bye, Eric. We're going to miss God you. God bless you. Yeah. God bless. So, Dennis, do you have information for our audience of where they can find out more about High Hopes 2? Yes, they can go to High Hopes Channel 1 on YouTube, and uh, they will be able to see an upload of both trailers and the original first film. The film we're now promoting is High Hopes uh, 2, A New Beginning, and um, it kind of changes the first story a little bit, so it's good to have a little bit of the background. Um, we will be doing the film festival circuit, and um, so please look for us in uh, 2017. And um, we do have high hopes to get picked up and become a TV series. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you liked the show. Please watch for the rest of our shows on YouTube and like us on Facebook at Stage, Screen, and In Between with Helen.